am giving the defendants the opportunity to voluntarily surrender. Former President Trump has been indicted a fourth time. The charges from a Georgia grand jury. The County Board of Supervisors seat previously held by Nathan Fletcher up for grabs how you can vote today. Are we going to be playing tennis back and forth between us and San Diego with people's lives? A South Bay city considers its own encampment ban. Plus, caught on camera, a local woman hit by a trash truck, but her attorneys claim the driver was doing. Temperatures are warming up between now and Thursday. We also have a daily risk of monsoonal moisture at 6 a.m. on Tuesday, August 15th in Europe with CBS 8. Breaking news from overnight. Former President Donald Trump has been indicted for the fourth time in five months. Thanks for joining us here at 6 a.m. Everyone, I'm Eric Connert. And I'm Nettie Rompour. So glad you're with us here. A Georgia grand jury handed up to 41 charges against Trump and 18 of his allies. You see their images all right here on your screen. This is all for their alleged roles in trying to overturn the 2020 election loss. As Jared Hill reports, they all have until next Friday to voluntarily surrender to authorities. New legal trouble for former President Donald Trump. A Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment. Georgia District Attorney Fonnie Willis late Monday with the 41 count indictment against the GOP frontrunner and 18 of his allies. The defendants engaged in a criminal racketeering enterprise to overturn Georgia's presidential election result. The indictment unsealed before cameras also names former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and Trump's one-time personal lawyer Rudy Giuliani. The former New York City mayor, one of those accused of racketeering and conspiracy for allegedly putting in calls to pressure local officials and making false statements about election fraud. Overnight, Giuliani called the indictment part of a book of lies. Georgia's former Republican Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan testified before the grand jury yesterday. My hope is that Americans believe us. My hope is that Republicans believe us. The investigation was first sparked by Trump's January 2021 phone call with Georgia's Secretary of State. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. Trump has maintained he didn't do anything wrong and his campaign called the indictment election interference. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. Well, today is the final day for thousands of people to cast a ballot in the special election for San Diego County's fourth supervisor district that includes places like Mission Valley, La Mesa, Claremont. Four candidates are running for the position once held by Nathan Fletcher. So we just showed you the images of those candidates. Now Fletcher stepped down earlier this year following sexual harassment and assault allegations. CBS 8's Chris Grow joining us live now at the North Claremont Rec Center. That's one of 14 voting centers people can stop by today. Chris, give us the latest. Yeah, good morning, Eric and Netta. And this uh, voting center, like the others, will be open up from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So you have more than 12 hours there, 13 hours to have your voice heard to make sure that you cast your ballot, especially if you live in District 4. Of course, uh, that's who the voting centers are open for. Now, you will be going and voting and finding the next representative for you on the County Board of Supervisors. You have four candidates to choose from here. Let's go through the list of them. You just saw their pictures. You have Democratic candidate Monica Montgomery Stepp, an attorney as well as a San Diego City Council member, Democrat Janessa Goldbeck, a Marine veteran, Republican Amy Reichert, and then Republican Paul McQuig, a Marine veteran and U.S. Census Bureau employee. Now, whoever wins by 50% or more will fill that vacant seat for the remainder of the term that ends in January of 2027. They'll also be a deadlock vote breaker. Currently, you have two Democrats and two Republicans on the County Board of Supervisors, and that district's four seat has been empty since it was vacated after former supervisor Nathan Fletcher resigned amid sexual assault allegations made by a former MTS employee. That former employee has sued Fletcher. He's denied the allegations while admitting to a consensual relationship with her. Meanwhile, voters are trying to focus on the current candidates and the issues and trying to sort through the noise. Education is important to me and crime as well. We do need our roads fixed, not with taxes. We do need better school choice, not with taxes. 
and already 70 more than 73,000 votes have been cast. That was the latest information from the registrar voters as of yesterday afternoon. So obviously that number likely to go up once we get these voting centers up and running. This is a chance for you to vote in person. Also drop off a ballot as well too. They will close at 8 p.m. But if you're already in line by the time the clock strikes eight, you will still be able to cast your ballot. Eric and all right, Chris, thank you for that. This morning, Chula Vista is exploring a possible homeless encampment ban. This comes three weeks after the city of San Diego started enforcing its own ban. Ever since then, neighboring cities have seen what some are calling a ripple effect. More people experiencing homelessness moving into their communities. CBSA's Regina Urita shares both sides of this issue happening right now in Chula Vista. As San Diego cracks down on homeless encampments, Chula Vista nonprofits are having to turn unsheltered people away. The influx of unhoused people fleeing to South County is exacerbating the limited services offered. We're already dealing with capacity issues, just dealing with what Chula Vista had as an unhoused population. It's now brought up concern from council members who are exploring stricter policies. I went ahead and proposed uh, looking at the ordinance of no camping, uh, got a unanimous uh, support in being able to look at it. Mayor John McCann says the city already has a rule that prohibits tents on sidewalks. McCann wants to expand the rule to all public spaces. We need to make sure that we're getting homeless off the streets, but also protecting our neighborhoods and our small businesses. Homeless advocates oppose the ban. They say San Diego's ban has only shuffled people from one city to the next. Are we going to be playing tennis back and forth? between us and San Diego with people's lives because where are those folks to going to go? Are they going to spill into National City, Imperial Beach? A federal ruling prohibits a person from being cited for sleeping outside if no shelter beds are available. So far, Chula Vista has offered 65 tiny homes through its bridge shelter. McCann is pushing to add more shelters. As for the unhoused moving into Chula Vista. We have our homeless outreach team work with them to get them back to where they were receiving services. Regina Yurita, CBS 8. All right, a lot of folks waking up here, picking yeah. out those back to school outfits. We know San Marcos Unified uh, starting here today. In yes. fact, we're going to be uh, chatting with the superintendent here at 630 about uh, how excited they are. And they're going to have a little surprise for us. So uh -huh. we're looking forward to that. A, a uh, lot of people six, are up. Seven, early. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Until we get those. Uh, <laughs> let's leave it to the let's leave it to the professional cheerleaders, Second please. Second best to the San yes. Marcos cheerleaders. Yes. Is me. Five, six, seven, <laughs> eight. Decent eye I know. I, I had to be careful with this. Yes. We do need to get you some pom poms. That's right. Yeah. Oh, please. Yeah. I would. I would just rock it from here. They should be sending me out to San Marcos. Yeah. They should join um, in with them. It's yeah. at least very mild to start off okay. the morning nice. in San Marcos. Take a look. We've got 69 degrees to start off the morning temperatures are easily going to warm to the 70s by recess recess expected to make it to about 79 degrees and then once you pick the kids up from school 86 is that afternoon high remember we do have some cumulus clouds that are going to be drifting in inland and across the mountains and that's what do you want me to yeah exactly kick the clouds out of the Boom. There you go. Go. <laughs> get rid of those low clouds we don't need them uh, if you are inland you're going to be seeing those upper 80s upper 70s along the coast the coast hey they didn't really see much clearing occur at all as we went into the afternoon afternoon hours yesterday. Today is going to follow a pretty similar pattern. We don't have a lot of clearing expected, so AM clouds, PM sun, but the PM sun is going to be a pretty minimal opportunity for it. The plus side to this forecast is that in days moving forward, Wednesday and Thursday, we will have a less active marine layer, a more shallow marine layer, and that should encourage a bit more clearing on hand. Across the mountains and deserts, pretty warm too. 91 for the mountains, 111 out there for the deserts as that afternoon high. So let's take a look at what's going on as far as your satellite radar imagery goes. We see those clouds stretching. Uh, pretty decently inland. Uh, they're not quite stretching as far east as yesterday, so that is a promising sight. Could encourage that uh, clearing of the clouds as the, we tend to see closer to 10, 11 a.m., that recession of clouds. Uh, it's just west of the five that we have mainly hung out with those clouds for quite a while. A little bit of green popping up across the mountains and deserts. Not a lot of trouble out there, but if we run this back to yesterday afternoon, you could see how those showers were pretty close by. San Bernardino, Riverside County, quite active as far as their opportunity for showers and thunderstorms over the mountains. Ours were 
few and far between out there. Let's take a look at what's going on as far as traffic goes. We know things are pretty light on the road so far, so no major crashes or collisions to get to this morning. But we also do have a look at your border wait times. It's 609 on the clock right now. A hundred minute wait, an hour 40 right now at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. Otay Mesa Port of Entry going to take you about an hour 10 to get through. Once you get onto our highways, you can head to CBS8.com slash traffic. It'll give you the latest on those road conditions and your drive times as well. Back to you. Mm, already backing up a lot there. Thank you, Evan. Still had new questions about the response during the Maui wildfires. Plus, blindsided. The former NFL star at the center of the movie The Blind Side now says his story was all a lie. And the push to keep San Diego trash free this summer. Not an early riser? If you can't watch CBS 8 Mornings live, watch us on your own time on CBS 8 Plus. Add our app today to your Roku, Fire TV, and now Apple TV and watch us on your schedule.